So our next speaker, uh, Naomi Gonda, as I said, uh, couldn't come, but she sent, a, she sent a, a presentation on patriarchy and climate change, a feminist political ecology of climate change adaptation in rural Nicaragua. Dear all, as unfortunately I could not make it to this very exciting event, uh, as I broke my leg last Sunday during a hike, I wanted to introduce myself before my presentation. My name is Noemi Gonda, and I'm currently a doctor researcher at Central European University. Previous to that, I have been working for nearly 10 years, mainly in Central America, with smallholder farmers organizations and indigenous groups on topics related to nature resources management and all sorts of agricultural issues. In my work, I have always been interested in and committed to issues related to environmental justice, social justice, including gender justice. My current research is a multi-sided feminist ethnography of climate change adaptation in rural Nicaragua. I wish you a very fruitful event and would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to be here, even if it's at, at a distance. In the following five minutes, I would like to share with you some policy relevant findings of my doctoral research on gender and climate change in rural Nicaragua. To summarize it in a few words, my research is interested in Nicaraguan rural women and men's experiences of climate change. I want to find out how the biophysical impacts of climate change, such as shifting rainfalls, illustrated here with a photo of one of my research sites where droughts were very heavy in 2014, Together with the dominant narratives on climate change, illustrated here with this image retrieved from Oxfam's website, may reinforce unequal gender relations. The first aspect I would like to call your attention on relates to how gender dimensions are addressed in current Nicaraguan climate change policies and interventions. Nicaragua is one of the most climate change affected countries in the world, according to scientific assessments, illustrated here with a graph that shows the expected increase in average temperatures in Nicaragua between now and 2100. In this context, since the turn of this decade, Nicaragua has adopted climate change adaptation as one of its core priorities. However, Nicaragua has held a slightly different stance on climate change to the mainstream scientific one. Indeed, Nicaragua's Sandinista government holds a political discourse on the environment that puts people first, denounces capitalism, calls for a new ecological, economic, social and political model based on values such as solidarity and inclusion. In particular, there's a special discursive visibility given to women seen as a potential saviors in the face of climate change, a stance that is also reflected in Nicaragua's national climate change adaptation strategy. Believe it or not, Nicaragua is also currently the sixth best-ranked country in the world in terms of the Global Gender Gap Index, and in contemporary Nicaragua, numerous social and agricultural programs are directly targeted towards women. What lessons can be drawn from the Nicaraguan case? First, it is important to acknowledge that by making discursively omnipresent women, the Nicaraguan climate change policies do not talk about the necessary transformation of current gender relations. My interviews has shown that this confusion between women and gender is still widespread among practitioners in Nicaragua. Often, while practitioners purport to be mainstreaming gender in their climate change strategies, in practice, they use a women in development approach and end up only talking about women. This is the front page of a recently published document on gender and climate change adaptation in Nicaragua I wrote. The main message of the document is this, gender is not equal to women. Despite of this, the editors of the document changed the original front picture I proposed that represented a woman and a man working on a plot to this picture of a sole woman. Second, the way policies and interventions address women's concerns often tends to reinforce women's traditional gender roles. An illustrative example is the Nicaraguan climate change adaptation strategy. One of its line of action is environmental education. The strategy mentions that women are the most apt to implement environmental educational actions as they are already the educators of their children. This shows how this approach is not about transforming gender relations. Therefore, it is extremely important to recognize that in certain contexts, 
Gender biases conveyed by climate change policies and interventions are even more likely to deepen gender inequalities than climate change's biophysical impacts, such as shifting rainfall patterns. Numeric indicators of women participating in policymaking and projects on climate change do not always reflect progress towards gender equality. Nicaragua, the country with the highest participation of women in high political positions, is a striking example of this. It shows that working towards gender justice in climate change requires, in addition to women's participation, challenging the manifestation of existing gender hierarchies in policies and interventions. Based on David Schlossberg's work on environmental justice, a threefold reconceptualization of gender justice in the field of climate change can be useful. In addition to participation, there should be a major recognition of how existing forms of gender inequalities play out in climate change policies and interventions. In addition, there should be more attention paid to the unequal distribution of roles, responsibilities and harms both in climate change interventions and narratives. Climate change adaptation practices are not gender neutral. For example, the introduction of efficient cooking stoves may reinforce women's traditional gender role of cooking. In the same way, convincing male cattle breeders to adopt cocoa production may be challenging for in a society that views cattle breeding as a more masculine livelihood. The challenge thus becomes promoting climate smart as well as gender smart practices. Finally, detecting the reproduction of gender hierarchies in climate change projects and policies needs a contextualized and qualitative approach to understand the gendered climate change experiences of rural women and men. More qualitative feminist research on climate change is therefore needed to advance the debate and complement the usual scientific and quantitative assessments. Thank you very much for your attention.